Everybody and welcome back to Planet Wisdom Season 2, Episode 2. Can you believe we're already here? We're halfway through January. I can hardly understand it. Guys, I am so excited for this evening's episode. I feel like 17-year-old me is freaking out right now. And 45-year-old me is freaking out too. Guys, you know him from Kids in the Hall. You know him from This Hour, this hour Has 22 Minutes. Say that five times fast. He's won two Geminis, one Emmy, and a very prestigious Writers Guild of Canada Award. And probably many more that I don't know about. But best of all, guys, he's won our hearts. Aww. And tonight, I hope he'll win our hearts again. Guys, I want you to give a very warm and very Canadian welcome to the amazing Paul Bellini. Paul, how are you? Hello, Liz. How are you? I'm great. It's so, so good to hear you. Let's see if I can fix my audio. It's being a little bit feisty all of a sudden. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. I'm really uh, thrilled to be in your show, actually. Oh my gosh, I was so thrilled when you said yes. I, I Literally, guys, it was a Hail Mary last week. I had a last minute cancellation. I thought, you know what? Why don't I just ask? <laughs> there you go. That's all it takes. It's all it takes sometimes. And you know, I have to say, uh, you know, I've been a fan since Kids in the Hall first came about. I, you know, um, and it, I had, to, I have to say, it was really nice to go down memory lane and do more research and creep you more and learn more about you, you know. Um, mm -hmm. There's actually quite a bit that I didn't know about. So I'm really, really excited to kind of explore all of that with you. You mean the murder rap? The murder rap, um, you know, uh, Mouth Congress, all sorts of things. Like there's just so much that you are up to. And, you know, I, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, guys, <laughs> reach out with a comment because this show is all about you. And right off the top, my sister says, hello. Hi, Monica. Hi, Monica. She honestly, I have to say, Monica is the smarter of the two of us. She's a brilliant mind. Um, she's kind of my unofficial writer, and I hope to give her an award someday. Uh. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I wanted to tell you off the bat, Kids in the Hall single-handedly saved our high school art trip to New York back in the nineties. Um, you'll remember when Coach Buses only had uh, those little tiny uh, screens and a VCR. Do you, do you remember that back in the 90s? Right? I, don't think I was ever taking buses back then. Okay, but well, I get your idea. 
Long story short, in this bus were uh, probably about 40 teenagers. And that's already a nightmare for the driver. Wow. And um, driving to New York was many, many hours. And nobody thought to bring a movie except my sister Monica, who brought two VHS tapes full of Kids in the Hall episodes. Wow. So I think we, we probably touched Bellini about 12 times on our way to New York. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> and you still cross the border with no problem. That's yeah. Well, I mean, this is back in the 90s. They didn't do any credit checks or background checks. Bus full of kids. They were like, come on in. So Monica just put up a quote from They Live by John yeah. Carpenter, which I watched for the first time about a week ago. No way. Yeah, my boyfriend put it on. And I'd never seen it. And it's got that line. And I went, that's where that chewing gum line comes from. Yes, it's such oh, a great yeah. movie. Such a great movie. Oh, there's my brother. The family has arrived. <laughs> Um, you know what? Jeff's actually asking a really great question off the top. He's asking, are those googly eyes on your collar? Oh, these. I got these. At a friend of mine, um, uh, my friend Linda Paolucci bought them for me. They are googly eyes. I don't know if you can see them. I'll get closer. Um, so cool. I got them at uh, Eyesore Cinema um, on Bloor and near Duff, just past Dufferin. And uh, they're so cute. Somebody made them. And uh, I thought I'd wear them tonight to show that I'm all seeing. <laughs> you you are all seeing. Yeah. <laughs> That's very, very awesome. Oh, well, Ryan already wishes he could touch you. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Well, you never know. Now, um, I have to say, uh, you know, being a Canadian uh, celebrity and one of Canada's sweethearts for sure, how often do you get asked in the day if people can touch you? Actually, very rarely. Really? Yeah. Um, I think the thing with the Kids in the Hall fan base is that it's international. So in my Toronto neighborhood, I'm more known for being um, uh, a gay magazine columnist because I did that for 11 years uh, than I am for being the towel guy. Because you got to remember in the gay community, everybody wears a towel at the baths. So it's not such a big thing, right? That's true. That's true, actually. Um I, I wanted to talk about that, actually, being a columnist for Fab Magazine. I think that's really, really cool. I loved it. For 11 years, I got invited to all kinds of cool things, like art gallery openings and liquor tastings. All, the liquor tastings are the best, of course. One time, I met with a mixologist who had created four cocktails for the royal wedding. Remember when Kate Middleton got married? Oh, yes, and yes. I drank all four. It was about noon, and I remember staggering home at 1.30 in the afternoon <laughs> thinking, I am so drunk. It was great fun. Oh, I miss those days so much. It's true. Drinking in public? Yes, of course. But oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, my, my fab column gave me those opportunities, and I love doing it because it opened up. Also, I interviewed over 250 people, most of them in the gay and queer community or our arts community um so i know everybody oh yeah i suppose so eh? it's Toronto, anyway so. oh my gosh i just said it's so canadian i suppose so eh oh so yeah yeah good job huh <laughs> did you share a teamies <laughs> <laughs> it's funny i don't know about you but i don't really realize that i'm canadian until i'm talking to someone who's not uh yeah or like when you meet an american and they say things like um do you have the bible in canada you know those kind of people <laughs> or or like they ask if it's it's snowing in july it's like, yeah. well, it depends what part of canada you're in yeah they get yeah. snow too please Gosh, grow up as joan rivers would say i oh i loved joan rivers so much <laughs> oh my gosh actually you know i watched um, the other day i was watching a lot of older um women in comedy like older older footage of women in comedy and joan rivers was coming up um her and carol burnett were just some of my favorite favorite comedians honestly that that's well my growing up you know being a a little gay kid growing up in timmins in 1973 for me a uh, carol burnett and mary tyler moore were huge but the gold standard was beatrice arthur as maud yeah. And I probably learned more about comedy from watching Maud than maybe any other comedian. Although I, I remember Dean Martin's show. Do you remember Dean Martin's show in the seventies? He always oh, yeah. be drunk, and he literally only 
showed up that day and wouldn't rehearse. Yeah. Uh, to give this this sense of spontaneity and he's constantly breaking the fourth wall. Oh, yeah. That inspired me more than I think any other kind of comedy were those two people. We watch a lot of Dean Martin in this house, so I can absolutely relate. Um, he was the king of spontaneity. He was just you know? so cool. It's like oh, he cool. didn't care. It, I, it it was it, it was a remarkable show what he pulled off. I thought he was really great. Absolutely, and he was one of those um, triple threats. He can act, he can sing, he can dance, he can do everything. Yes, I like to think you know? I can do that too. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, and I'm so glad that you're telling me about your your early influences because I wanted to discuss what brought you from A to Bellini. You know, ah. I've been dying to say that all day. Well, <laughs> what you mean, like growing up, like I was one of those yeah. little kids. I was very creative. Uh, I lived in a world of creativity. Like my uncle used to come and babysit me when I was about six or seven and he wanted to watch the hockey game and I had no interest in sports. So he'd bring me some pencil crayons and um, legal paper, you know, full scap. Yep. And he'd fold it in half and he'd say, uh, make a magazine for me. And I would spend hours making a magazine for uncle Freddie. Well, he enjoyed hockey and whatever else. Um, and I was very craft oriented, and that's something that's always been with me. I'm still like that. I'm I'm very I'm a busy body. I have to have something to do. Very very cool. I didn't know that about you actually. Um, you know, I I my sister and I started a zine in high school, and I um, up until the pandemic was running a zine as well. So I absolutely um, relate and appreciate how much fun it is to put together a publication. I mean, and how funny that it informed your, you know, your your direction into being a columnist with Fab Magazine and being a writer. Before that, uh, when I was in high school, I was uh, the yearbook editor for one year and assistant editor for two years. And I had a newspaper column in the Daily Press about high school activities, the TH and VS column. Um, you know, I was, I was one of those kind of obnoxious kids. I mean, I, you know, I needed a million things to do to keep me oh, busy. Yeah. Me too. Uh, none of them were sports. Yeah. Um, did you ever go to band camp? No, I have no musical ability whatsoever. <laughs> but um, I, I'm assuming drama was probably somewhere on the menu. Drama From club saved my life. Uh, it brought me into a world of weirdos, um, many of them gay or lesbian. Uh, and, and sometimes just very non-conforming or rebellious people or troubled people. And it was a family. Um, and for three years, we used to do these major musicals every year. We did The King and I and Fiddler on the Roof and My Fair Lady. These big mega productions that would like, we'd do like six performances. We'd do a whole week of shows. Wow. Um that was that to me that was phenomenal a phenomenal experience and 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 basically shaped who i am you know i hear that so often from so many so many highly creative folks that drama club really did change the course of their life myself included you know you really yeah. you learn about yourself when you're on the stage you know you really you develop a skill set that transcends not just performance but your life well, I realized early on that my strength was not in performance, that it was in backstage, it was in creating, it was in uh, developing stuff. Uh, who's this? So Rochelle did makeup, costume, and set design. Which musicals? I'm just wondering. Ooh, Rochelle, let us know. While Rochelle is letting us know, Donna would like to know who your fabulous tailor is. I know you were telling me before the uh, show. This jacket was designed and made by a woman named Gina Anki, who runs Theatrix Costume House in Toronto, which I think is now at like around Queen and Niagara. I'm not sure. You'd have to look it up. Um, and at the time, she had a different location. Um, she was very nice. She offered to build me an outfit. She said, either, you know, we'll build you something or take anything in the store. I said, I want a gold suit. Because I had seen it on the Elvis Presley record, you know, the Elvis is in the full gold suit. Mm -hmm. And I thought, <laughs> that looks good. So she did. She made me a jacket and pants. I'm not wearing the pants or else I'd stand up and show you. Um, yeah, Gina and Theatrics, God bless her. She's a genius. Um, 
she actually did a lot of the mouth congress costumes for our okay. show. Okay. Very, uh, very cool. But the jacket, um, I've had it for about 10 years. I wear it as often as possible. It, um, let's be honest, it gives me a little class. It looks fantastic on you. The instant you put it on, I was just like ooing and awing and freaking out. It's wonderful. You know? And look at that. Oh, look it is gorgeous. It is light. It is light gorgeous. Is, oh, the light hits it beautifully. Oh, ah. Rachel's telling me that uh, she used to, or she worked, Stop the World, I Want to Get Off, Cabaret and Sweet Charity. Okay. Cabaret and Sweet Charity. That's two interesting Bob Fosse movies. Definitely a lot of hookers and stuff. Yeah. You know, whereas we did like My Fair Lady, it's so classy. Oh, gosh. Are under very dignified shows. I want to change the light. And hang on a second. <clears throat> Alexa, change the office light blue. Okay. Oh, I love Alexa. Oh, I love Alexa. Isn't that, isn't that a little more relaxed instead of uh, good old Alexa? Yeah. She is. Absolutely. Okay, Alexa, stop talking now. Fun fact, in public school, uh, my best friend and I started a Pygmalion club because we were obsessed with My Fair Lady. Uh, and that, folks, is the secret to becoming popular in a small town. <laughs> no. It me. Yeah, it, it, it successfully um, ostracized us for the rest of our public school career. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be lovely? <laughs> Oh my gosh, everyone's talking about hookers now. All right, guys. <laughs> oh, Monica's asking, Paul, are you wearing any pants? Yeah, She's not yeah. asking if I'm wearing pants, but if you are. Uh, but a, a really ugly uh, Kmart sweatpants, so uh, please don't ask to see them. Nice. <laughs> Give me a shred of dignity. Yes. Just use your imagination. <laughs> oh my God, Monica's saying, I forgot all about that. My sister, the nerd. Yes, yes. <laughs> and Donna's saying that um, her school couldn't afford to do My Fair Lady. They did Lurking on the Railroad. What is that? Was that a production number or is that a show? Oh, that sounds like an after-school drinking special. Kind of lurking. It's got a weird sexual connotation. It does. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I was talking the other day about getting busted lurking on Facebook. Um uh, I forget who's, you know, when you go down that rabbit, rabbit hole of, you see a photo, you see someone you knew back in the day yeah. and all of a sudden you somehow end up on their profile going back through photos. And without even thinking about it, I just liked a photo. I was like, Oh my God, they're going to know I was here. I wasn't supposed to be here. <laughs> oh, you mean people can see when you're lurking? Right. Well, apparent. well, it didn't make any sense because why would I randomly like that photo? I don't know. <laughs> for the record i don't do that very often <laughs> liz don't give up every secret not in this oh, trust me i am a full book of fun <laughs> <laughs> actually speaking of fun tonight remember um we were doing our tech rehearsal yesterday and i i wasn't really sure what i was going to wear today uh -huh. i actually gave myself a challenge i went to value village about an hour before the show and I looked for the ugliest shirt I could find, and I successfully found this piece of work here. Wow. I'm not sure if it's the bow or the pie symbol, but I think it's pretty awesome. You lucked yeah. out. $2.99, folks. That is, that is a Mouth Congress wardrobe piece, if I've ever seen one. I got to say, as hideous as it is, it's really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> That's what matters. You know, even if it was itchy, I would have suffered through it because I just, I wanted to wear the ugliest thing I could find because really at the end of the day, it's about the laughs. It's about the you laughs. Know? It's about the I laugh. Agree. I agree. Why do you I think know. I would become famous walking around wearing a towel? I'm a very shy person who is mortified by the idea. When, when I was in gym class and we'd have shirts and skins. Yeah. Uh, I'd always end up on the skins team and it was mortifying. And um, I always had body issues throughout my entire teenage years. And then all of a sudden the kids in the hall presented me with this weird option. Yep. To be bare chested on television. And for some reason at that instant, I thought, fuck it, I'm going to do it. I don't care anymore. And it was an impulsive decision. 
but it really did kind of liberate me in a way because you let go of all that baggage, all that teenage baggage. Yeah. You know, I was, when I did the towel guy, I wasn't that young. I was about 30. Right. Okay. Um, so it had, I'd had at least 15 years of agonizing over this. And it was just such a weird opportunity. Um, and also I wanted to be on the show. It was the only way I could get on the show. Well, and you know, and I can really, and you know, here's the funny thing. When I was going through your photos today for things to present, I discovered that you are actually a very handsome man. Thank you. Um, like, I, I gotta say, you're a good looking guy. Like, even with the, with that porn mustache, I'm just like, hot damn. Like, look at this Bellini does Fellini guys. Like, come on. Yeah, the mustache was pretty hot. Mm -hmm. I gotta admit. Well, and it, there is something to be said about, you know, getting rid of those barriers. I grew up in ballet. I had huge issues with everything. You know, nothing yeah. is ever perfect, nor will it ever be. But there is something very liberating about just doing, you know, being yourself. Like I'm constantly giving myself a double chin and looking ridiculous just to get rid of that. Hang on. The most horrible thing about being young is that you can't get to that part, that, that moment. Yeah. You know, when I did publicity photos, um, I wanted to look like Liz Burton, uh, what's her name? Liz Taylor on the cover of Hollywood Babylon too, where she's like sitting in the back of the limo and she looks really fat and drunk. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I wanted, I thought, I'm going to celebrate the triple chin. And I remember doing these stupid photos with a professional photographer. They're very funny. But at the same time, that's what I used to send out to people. Gosh. Honestly, Paul, I would love to do a double chin selfie with you one day. Because I am the queen of the double chin photos. <laughs> My friends well, and I own have it. a contest. <laughs> well, I own it. I win every time, let me tell you. <laughs> Do you remember that show? Uh, well, you probably you're too young to remember. Family. It was a TV show in the '70s, and it starred this woman named Seda Thompson, and okay. she had a triple chin. And they would do everything possible to hide it. They would light her from above. They put scarves. They they blur the the frame like the the side <laughs> of the lens. I remember I watched. I was fascinated by this wow. show because they did everything possible to hide this woman's triple chin. It was great. Oh that is so funny it's like folks come on like we are we, the world is full of different shapes and different sizes and different kinds of people like why no, no. <laughs> no? In the 70s you didn't know that this is true actually I, I was born in 76 i grew up in the 80s um i saw a lot of things that told me that uh you know i'm supposed to uh look a certain way oh hey oh it's mysterion he's okay and i had a fab column uh, I interviewed Chris, and I did a, a, a column on uh, Mysterion, which we had great fun. I remember it was something about flipping through a book and finding a weird word, and, and I, I came up with the most obscure song I could think of, and he guessed it. It was just great. I love it. Well, I don't I don't know if you knew, but that's all his photos and magic uh, awards right there. Are you like his girlfriend or something? I am. I'm his old lady. Oh, my God. God, that's hilarious. Let's say hi to him for me. It's been a I long will. time. <laughs> um, now, you know, moving forward, I have to I have to I show you this because you know, back in the day, I wanted to win and touch Bellini. And I found this photo today of the 1 800 number. <laughs> and I want to show you guys what happened when I dialed that. So let oh, me just get this. I can't for you. wait. All right, you ready? This is what happened when I dialed the 1-800 number. Coming to you in a second. My stream deck is acting up. There we go. So that's what actually happened. I dialed it and it said, thank you. Goodbye. Click. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least it said, thank you. 
It was the funniest thing. (laughs) But I was like, how can I win if I can't get through? Well, I remember, I think the CBC had to buy that number for the purposes of the contest. I don't remember if it was functional. You know, the second contest was uh, a craft contest. You had to do a drawing of me coming out of a condom box. Yes. Um, so that that was an actual physical entry, and those are fabulous. I still have those somewhere. Yeah. I'm uh, pretty yeah. sure we drew some and sent them in. But well, I've got them. I kept all <laughs> of them. And uh, but the the first one was just um, phone in, and and you know your name goes into a drum and like a charity bingo, and you pick one out. That's yeah. Cool. No, that's awesome. And you know, it, it's the sort of thing where. I didn't know I was competitive until this contest came around Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I kept trying to enter and I kept trying to win. And I was like, I I literally would think to myself, what would I do if I got to touch Bellini? And all week, everybody's like, well, are you going to touch Bellini? How are you going to do it? What, like, you know, are you going to use a stick? Are you going to, or what are you going to do? And I said, guys, Bellini's on the other side of the camera. How am I going to touch him? And then I came up with a very, very elegant solution. (laughs) <laughs> what is that i made a bellini is that like a pillow it's a little bellini doll <laughs> and i didn't have any stuffing so i used gain dryer sheets so you saw <laughs> amazing <laughs> it smells gorgeous <laughs> so here i am touching bellini and i'm gonna touch your nose and pick it Oh, and I've got a Bellini booger. Ah, I <laughs> love the leg positioning. I, it's like I've got my legs crossed, like Esther Williams or something. Yeah. Well, did I ever pose for that picture? I don't. Well, th- this was the photo that I got it from. But oh. then I was like, "Well, how would you do your legs?" And I was like, "Well, this looks like those those vintage um sideshow pinballs that you would use right. to throw with balls." <laughs> so I was like, well, why don't I just make you look a little bit vintage and cross your legs? And there you go. <laughs> mm. <That's laughs> really, you know. Mm. Exactly. So very elegant. I, I've been having lots of fun with this on TikTok. Stay tuned because you're gonna see lots of ridiculousness. Uh, <laughs> yes. So there we go. Now I have technically touched Bellini. Oh well, you know what? Here. I I'll I'll drag these out. So when we did the show, um, Bruce wrote a sketch called Bellini Day, which is set in the future. And it's about how I'm like Jesus. And uh, there's a it's Bellini Day is like Christmas. And they created these little tree ornaments. Oh, my gosh. Those are so cool. You don't really see them too well in the sketch, but they're they're pretty adorable. Oh it's my goodness. this little it's a little fat monk that they got in some kind of dime store novelty. And they painted it and put a little towel on it. I guess it's really hard to. Oh, that is so cool. Then, in anticipation of the uh, return of Kids in the Hall in April of this year, um, this showed up. And this is a little Bellini deity made from a 3D printer. And I think this company is actually going to be manufacturing them. I told them, make it a little fatter. I mean, I wish I was that thin, honestly. No, that is so awesome. I love 3D printing. I think it is just so neat. So I love uh, becoming, uh, what do you call it, a toy ornament. You've become a Hasbro. <laughs> Hasbro. There are likenesses of me for some weird reason. I don't know. Well, I, I tried to make you look, I, I tried to make your face look like your face. Like, it's actually not so easy to get someone's likeness. I think you did a really good job on the belly, especially the hair pattern, that little trail that goes down my belly towards the crotch. Looks really good. Thank you. I was hoping you, the, would, the you would appreciate it. The breasts are rather that. white for some reason. It's like I'm wearing a bra. Well, you know what You know what it was? I was worried that um, there wouldn't be any depth, so I kind of oh, left this white and the face. Please. <laughs> <laughs> the breasts look like these eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. That was unintentional. I was just trying to get some depth there. <laughs> it looks like you fell asleep on a tanning bed. <laughs> yeah, with my hands. <laughs> 
Liz, I still love it. Thank you. You still smell fantastic. Would have bounce sheets or something? Yeah, I, I, the gain, gain. I'm obsessed gain. with gain. If I could get a gain fragrance, like perfume, I would totally wear it all the time. Mm. Uh, my brother actually noticed something that I had done as an Easter egg. Um, I was watching Kids in the Hall earlier today. Mark McKinney was wearing a Codco shirt in one of his sketches. So I wrote Codco on Peter's shirt in the cartoon. So good job, Chris. Good catch. Uh, you know, Codco, we loved. And we basically stole their director. Is that what happened? Because I, I grew up watching Four on the Floor and Codco. And Tommy Sexton was my man. Yeah, he's really? A super talented person. Oh, so amazing. Super talented. A yeah. Great writer. An incredible performer. He can sing and dance. He's really good. Absolutely. He was I, one of my, my favorites. I think their first two seasons were directed by John Blanchard. And the kids were looking for a director, and someone suggested John Blanchard. He'd already, he'd already, uh, he'd also worked on SCTV. Ah, okay. Um, so he came with great credentials. But I remember the first two years of Codco for me were like almost gold standard for sketch comedy. And I've always, I tell my students that you've got to see this show, but it, it's hard. The the new fee accents are a little impenetrable, and it's yeah. it's. I mean, they're so they're so gifted with characterization, so I mean, and Kathy and Mary went on to become pretty famous. Well, actually, they all did. Let's be honest; they all yeah. had great careers. So did Andy and Greg. Absolutely. Um, where Tommy didn't last very long, unfortunately. But that was a super troop, and oh, yeah. just astonishingly good. So I love that you paid homage to Codco because I, I love them. Thank you. I I didn't realize that you love them like I love them, and I'm I'm really even more touched about it because. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't I didn't have cable. We had black and white TV. We had CBC, CTV, and on a really good day, TVO. Yeah. And I would look forward to watching Four on the Floor in Codco every week. You know, um, I think Four on the Floor was more of a, a, a special. I don't think it was weekly, but Codco was. Well, and you know, that's a good question. I can't remember, but you know, Redican worked on on Kids in the Hall for several years. We loved Dan Redican. Did a lot of live shows with him. Um, before the floor, uh, you know, Mr. Canoe Head and Boot in the Head are fabulous sketches. They really work. I wish there was more of that on YouTube, unfortunately. There's not that much of them. It's but true. Those two pieces are really good. Well, it's funny. If you, you can go anywhere in Canada, and if you say Boot to the Head, guaranteed someone's going to go, la, la, yeah. somewhere. You know, it's iconic. It is. It really is. Now, um, you know, having worked in comedy for for the amazing amount that you have do you have any specific scenes that you are so proud of writing from kids in the hall kids in the hall this hour has 22 minutes you name it like what really sticks out in your mind where you go you know what i am proud of that there's a scene that uh scott and i wrote on kids in the hall called meet it elsewhere and it's about a gay couple and a straight couple who come for dinner. And one of the gay guys is doing cocaine upstairs in the bathroom. Oh, and, I remember this one. Yeah. And he comes running. He keeps running up and down. And and um, I remember at the time we were angry at Mark McKinney for some reason. So we cast him, but we didn't give him any lines. And Mark, he's a genius. When he was figuring out the character, he asked for these giant teeth. And so... He had no lines, but every one of his reaction shots stole the show because he'd go oh, like this. And it was so funny. And I remember thinking, damn, Mark, unbelievable. He is so smart. He That's always amazing. knows what to do. And and the scene I thought was just one of the best things Thompson and I ever wrote. I, I love that scene. Uh, one of my favorites. It is so funny. Absolutely. Like I, I actually was watching that. About two weeks ago, um, now that we can get Kids in the Hall on, I think, Amazon Prime, Amazon we've just Prime. been binging it like crazy. And yeah, that that sketch became funnier to me after I had lived a little in the city and partied and done a lot of ridiculousness. And all of a sudden, I could really kind of relate to it on a very different level. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's loaded with in-jokes. Like, the couple's name are Chuck and Olivia, I think. And which are the names uh, that they used on some CBC show, like I think Side Effects or, or okay, one of those the the one with uh, Cynthia Dale 
Oh, what street legal. legal. Street legal. Yeah, I think I, we were stuck in Olivia. So we were always like quoting other CBC shows just for fun, you know. That's right, Chuck and Olivia. That's right, right because they had their office right on yeah, Queen Street. In the K zone. <laughs> Don't you, Chuck? Chuck thinks you're being a pill. I fucking love that piece. Oh my god! <laughs> now that you said that, I have to watch that again. <laughs> oh, I, I, I drag it out every now and then. I love it so much. I, I was such a CBC on YouTube. Like all the stuffs on YouTube. I don't know who put it there. It's there's, interesting. Yeah, like who fan on YouTube who opened a page called Paul Bellini and it's not me at all and it's a picture of Bruce as the poo guy holding the plate of poo and I'm thinking I don't know who this person is but I wish they'd give me my name back yeah it's very weird oh that and, jerk ah. well you know be, being the personality that you are you know have have you come across any, because I, I was reading about you on Wikipedia where a lot of folks were giving shadowy men on a shadowy planet baking to take back to you. <laughs> and well, I, was like, I remember a big cookie coming once in the green room. I was going to say, like, did the scones make it? I don't know. <laughs> Poor shadowy men. They were always involved in something. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry. If someone gives me baking to give to someone, maybe one cookie out of the entire batch is going to make it back. The problem is you get food items and part of you is always thinking, is this okay to eat? You know, because you never know. And, and unless you know the fan personally, which happens a lot, by the way. Um, but if it just shows up, you don't quite know what to make of it. It's digestible. That's true because not everybody includes a list of ingredients and you can't necessarily trust that there aren't, you know, Lego pieces in there yeah, or whatever. Or urine or something horrible. I don't know. I mean, it's it's really weird. So it's it's very difficult accepting edible gifts yeah. from fans. That's true. Um, what is the weirdest non-edible gift you've received? Um, somebody gave me a necktie with a fish on it. It's quite beautiful. It's oh, like wow. a fish. That was a really I you know, I think who gave it to me was the guy who won the Bellini contest and we were in the airport. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Airport in Kentucky. And uh, I remember at the time he was a tall kid with red hair. No, this is that's the kid from uh, Ottawa. Oh, okay. I was, can't get the really, yeah. The other one is a tall red head. And um, <laughs> we went to the airport and I got into the towel and airport security threatened to arrest us because of obscenity. And I thought, oh, my breasts must, they're causing a riot here in Kentucky. Um, so we had to rent a ballroom in order to shoot that scene. Really? Very tough. You know, that's so weird. Like, it, it's its its an airport. You're there for five minutes. That's why, though, because it's America. They're all crazy. So True. I, I find well, in Canada we're a little more easygoing, you know? Yeah. Well, I get it. I get it. It's a public space, and we didn't have permits. We just, or no, we had permission, but they didn't know what we were doing. So okay. when I got undressed, it was a shock. Well, as it usually is, um, but especially so in Kentucky in this airport. Oh, that's true. And I guess, um, I mean, I know back in the day, anytime I did kind of any films or projects with other people and we didn't have a permit, we literally would just jump out of nowhere, do the thing, and then run away. Oh, you got to get the shot fast. Yeah, get the shot fast, run with the equipment, have a backup plan, and it never happened. But we were a big TV show. We we had producers and we had a budget, so we didn't have to do that. Oh, that's uh, true. But, but still, there are times when you just want to grab a shot and you don't want to, you know, do a hundred, jump through a hundred hoops to get it. The that's true. To include a towel next time. It's like, oh, <laughs> what do you mean? And a clause for semi-nudity. Yes, and semi-unity. So, I'm sure everybody probably asks, what do you wear under your towel? Uh, well, honestly, just underwear. Yeah. Um, I've, I've done some coy things like, wouldn't you love to know, and all that kind of crap. But let's be honest, of course, underwear. Of course. You know, I mean, it's, let's be realistic here. It's Canada. It's cold. Well, also, I mean... You know, I'll tell you why the producers love this. 
um, a towel guy segment, we usually could do it in two takes because there was no dialogue. So we often didn't even have to mic me uh, oh. or worry about me blowing a line. Um, it was easy to light. There was no makeup. I mean, they do a little bit on my forehead and nose, like just to take some sheen off my T-zone. Yeah. Uh, but um, there was no body makeup. That's the honest-to-God physique. Um, mind you, you're looking at I'm in my early 30s. It's, I'm at my peak of my beauty. Um, a little different now. Wait till you see my appearance in the new series in April. Yeah. Uh, that'll be a shock because I'm a lot heavier and older. Well, I'm really looking forward to that. Do you have any information about when it's going to air? Or? Uh, I just heard early April is a launch. There's some kind of a launch activity. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to be. Okay. And I'm assuming they're going to drop all eight episodes at once. So you could binge it. Uh, I saw some things. There was one sketch I laughed so hard. I, I It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It's Dave Foley as a doctor. Uh, delivering babies, and it was so funny. I, I almost puked. I mean, it was so really funny. The 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 show's beautiful looking too. It it just really great stuff. Great writing, amazing performing as usual, and it looks astonishing. A Amazon spent a lot of money on it. So. That's amazing. That's always that's always nice to see because I mean it's it it's Canada's to me it, it's Canada's like a uh, gem. You know, um, I can go anywhere in the world and talk about kids in the hall. People go, oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen this, 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 and this, and this, you know. You yeah. just you can't go wrong with that. That's trippy when I'm in a different city and somebody recognizes me. That's trippy. It, it doesn't happen in Toronto, but a lot of times on vacation, um, people would go, oh, my God, believe me. <laughs> that sort of thing, right? It's cute. That's really cute. Um, yeah, it's, it's got to be really interesting to have fans get flummoxed and freaked out and, you know, not knowing what to say or do or, you <laughs> well, know. see some kind of weird power when somebody is looking at you and they're actually have trouble breathing and, and I just think, I'm causing this reaction? That is so cool. <laughs> That's true. I, I have yet to experience that, but I imagine it's probably quite an amazing experience. It's <laughs> weird. Oh, that's just too funny. All right, guys, I got to play two commercials. We'll be back in two seconds. Yay. Hey, spooky friends. I'm Dr. Mysterion. I'm Catherine the Great. Come join us on our new podcast, Hey, hey spooky, spooky Friends. friends. Available on Spotify and Anchor. All things paranormal, spooky, weird, and somewhat bothersome. That's I, you. I think that's me. <laughs> so we'll see you and you'll hear us. Yeah, both. On our new podcast. See you then. Hey everyone, Planet Lizdom now has a Patreon. Your help will allow Liz to make the show even bigger, cover costs, and help bring on celebrity guests. Go to patreon.com forward slash Planet Lizdom and pledge now. All right, and we are back. Oh, are we? <laughs> that was fast. Fast commercials. Like real commercial break like on TV. No, I'm not quite there yet. I'm not quite the CBC. I'm more like the the Lisdom, um, out of Hot Mess headquarters. <laughs> we still have a tiny budget. <laughs> oh my gosh! So okay, I gotta ask. You know, um, before COVID, during COVID, after COVID, you know, how how has all of this been for you? And you know, doing all of these creative things because I know you just recently did something at Dead Dog Records before Christmas. Um, to do with uh, Mouth Congress, you know. Liz, let me take this opportunity to shamelessly shill my product. So yes. Mouth Congress was a, a ridiculous band that Scott and I started with a couple of guys that we knew back in November of 1984, before he actually even joined the Kids in the Hall. And um, we kept going for about six or seven years and then um, put it away because, you know, we had kids in the hall to do. Yeah. Um, then I loaded up all the tracks to Bandcamp. My my bassist Gore Disley suggested we should be on Bandcamp, and 
we got discovered by a guy who runs a record company in Brooklyn called Capture Tracks. And he said, let's do a Mouth Congress record. So the first thing we did was this adorable little seven inch single called Ah, The Pollution. Oh, cool. And it's three songs that we recorded in a studio back in 1986, I guess. Um, and it did well. But the thing is, it was slated to be released uh, in April of uh, 2020. So, of course, COVID destroyed all our plans for the release. Um, and then you put up the, the album cover, Waiting for Henry. That's just came out. We were lucky. We were able to do the show in the record store and another show later that night. Um, before, um, you know, with the most recent, uh, it wasn't really a lockdown, but, you know, the course, yeah. you know over uh, uh, Omicron. But, yes, yeah. that's us in the record store. It was great fun. We did six songs. Yes. And um, it kind of made us want to revive Mouth Congress in some kind of way. I mean, we're not like a real band. We're not going to tour and shit. Um, yeah. But we just like to do shows. We like to create things. Uh, we like to write songs. It's fun for us. Uh, it always was. Being able to put out the record, I'm very proud because... I always wanted an official record release. And you can listen to the songs on Spotify. You don't actually have to buy the record. Okay. Uh, all 33 songs that we released, I think, are on Spotify. Um, but it's out there now. It's out there alongside records by Half Japanese and The Residents and other kind of bizarre bands and, and Guided by Voices and all these other really eccentric, weird, niche bands that were big in the indie circuit and we finally got our due and i'm so happy i mean for me it's just been like a, a 35 year uh capper uh and we finally achieved something i've always wanted to meet scott uh well you, you could conjure it chris yes this is true <laughs> um <laughs> um so anyway uh uh, Mouth Congress keeps me fairly busy. Um, it's always going to be a side project. Kids in the Hall is a, a big thing. It's a big TV show. It's a, mm -hmm. a, a, you know, a major comedy entity. Mouth Congress is a very bizarre niche product. And like I said, we're not a real band. Um, we're almost a parody of rock bands, basically. Um, although we're not really uh, emphatically comedic. I don't think we're like um, Tenacious D, necessarily, in that the songs are meant to be funny. Sometimes we like to be serious and soulful and sad, melancholic, you know. That's okay. Uh, music is music. And, and, and the no. fact that Scott and I have zero training in music and horrible voices has not stopped us from fronting a band. And we you don't... Trainers, right? Well, and you make a really great point, you know... Um... It's not about how good you are at doing it. It's about doing it. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a very, very important point and message that you're giving right now. Do it. Do the thing. Yeah. Do, do it thing. badly. Um, my motivation has always been to make things, whether it was songs or artwork or sketches or movies or plays. It doesn't even matter. I like doing things. I like making things. Um part of it is a self-expression thing. You know, you feel that you have a point of view or an idea you want to get across, but some of it sometimes is just for the sake of doing it. Um, yeah. Like I make these little movies on cell phones and um, I shoot enough for a feature length and then wow. I put it all together. And sometimes I show them and sometimes I, I don't. And I just like doing it. It keeps me busy for six months, you know? I absolutely relate to that. I recently got into TikTok for that very same reason that it, it exercises your brain. Um, I've been doing it. Well, I opened an account about a year ago. Yeah. But the past two months, I've really started actively making things. I made a couple of things today that I can't wait to post because it's great for your brain. You put together yeah. a story. You know, when I was shopping for this really hideous shirt, I made a story about it. I saw something else funny in Value Village and I made a story about it, you know, and it's really good for your brain to just 
create, put it out there. Yes, you have that impulse and, and, and it's a scratch that has to be an itch that has to be scratched. Absolutely. Or a scratch that has to be itched. Either way. I'm actually dyslexic, dyslexic, so I get things backwards all the time. And I'm half French Canadian, so I'll say everything backwards too. <laughs> My excuse is actually I'm just drunk, so. I like that excuse. In fact, after this show, that's going to be my excuse for everything else I do tonight. Mm. I've, been, <laughs> I've been hitting the uh, Portuguese table wine all day. Oh my gosh. You know what I've always wanted to try? Night Train. Where you, it's, a, it's a screw top bottle of wine. It's like $3 or something like that in America. It sounds like a value. Oh, it sounds amazing. It sounds like the hangover would be um, really bad. <laughs> Yeah, every morning for me is a hangover, whether I drink or not. Oh, man. You know, the other night I have, or the other day, actually, I had a really funny moment where I'm laying in bed and I'm like, oh, I'm so exhausted. I need to rest. And all of a sudden I realized, but I am resting. What the hell? Oh, that's, that's great, Liz. <laughs> I need to rest, but I'm resting. You need to rest from resting. Yeah, and I was like, holy crap, am I that tired? You know what? Yes. Thank you. You just gave me an idea for a mouth congress song. Oh, there well, I'm go. very honored. <laughs> I need to rest from resting. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and there in that lies the very definition of what I'm experiencing with my pandemic fatigue. Oh. You know, I'm tired. I'm tired of being tired. Yeah, you know, I, I had a really good summer because we were denied so much that when uh, bars and restaurants opened again, I was so excited. And I actually went out more in the summer yep. than I normally would. And um, so maybe it's not a bad idea to actually shut down in the winter, make winter the most miserable three or four months of your entire life. Because yes. then in the spring, you can actually feel like a rebirth instead of just like, oh, you know, spring. No, it's true. You know, um, I would I would love to have um, some sort of clause or like, you, you know how like maybe a couple of days off a month just to be, you know, a hermit or like or like the hibernation clause. Like for three to, three days of each month in the wintertime, you can sleep for three days straight, no matter what. Yeah. Do what you got to do, just sleep. I've always had what I refer to as Paul days. Paul days, and I like that. Paul day means I don't leave the house. I don't even get dressed. I just pat around in my jammies. Yep. And I do what I want. I watch movies. I eat crap. I blab on the phone. Uh, it's a zero pressure day with no responsibilities and you just enjoy the Paul day because Absolutely. The next day it's back to being a monster and getting a million things done. I and call I it a TV pajama party. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Me. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see. What is going on with my computer? What's going on? Paul, oh. I have a cat named Paul. You needed to know that. I have a cat named Rochelle. What are the odds? Oh, I have a cat named Jack. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like I like that you engage in that self care. That's important. You know. Oh, I've always been like that. You have to have a, a little bit of selfishness, just a little. Paul days for everyone, absolutely. absolutely. Well, according to the Pope, I'm incredibly selfish because I do not have children and I have pets. Donna wants to know, was there ever a skit of towel guy coming out of hibernation with bears? Or was that a dream I had? Oh. That is a great idea, Donna. And please don't sue if you see it in any future episodes. <laughs> is it out there now? Oh, I love it. It's out there. You pitched it. That's right. Oh, and Catherine's planning her next Paul day. Well, Catherine's brilliant. That's why. She knows. Right. Take time Martin. for yourself. I've known Catherine for more than half my life. I can attest she's smart and hilarious. <laughs> well, listen, Paul, I want to thank you so much for being with us tonight. You are just absolutely a delight. Thank You're you. a fucking delight. <laughs> it was a party. I enjoyed it mostly because I've been drinking through the whole thing. So I love it. Well, you know, I'm very glad that you, you know, that you took my message and that you took a chance on this little show and showed up. <laughs> No, I, I'm I'm always delighted to do a podcast and do interviews and stuff. 
I think it's uh, when you get a chance to just talk about yourself for an hour without yeah. having to pay a therapist, it's great. Oh man, absolutely. So thank you, Liz, for the free therapy session. You are very, very welcome. <laughs> and you didn't have to unpack anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I just do a quick shout out to my friend, uh, John Forget, who I know is watching. And um, he's a podcast maniac. He loves podcasts. And uh, I hope he likes this one and is now a big fan of Planet Liz. I hope so. I actually wanted to say hi to him as well because he kindly informed me yesterday that my broadcast time looked a little bit strange because oh, I God. set this for 8 p.m. But somehow YouTube arbitrarily changed it to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Pacific, yeah. Yeah, still correct, but confusing to anyone who may not be paying attention to the time zone. So John has a key much. eye and he caught it. So there. Well, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you to you, Paul. I really hope that we get to do a double chin selfie together at some point. <laughs> um, I, I'm absolutely serious. Uh, I am a big fan of you and I think you're wonderful and marvelous. And I hope that I run into you on the streets of Toronto. Thanks, Liz. In fact, when, when the weather gets nice, maybe we should... Uh, I haven't seen Chris in, like I said, at least 12 years, maybe. Oh my gosh, come on over. We'll open up a bottle of night or drink. Even, yeah, or even if we just meet for a coffee or a beer or something. I'd love, Like I said, I, I haven't seen him in ages, so it'd be a fun chance to uh, do something this summer. You never know. Getting back to normal. I look forward to it. I really, really do. And I look forward to what's going to happen in April. So please keep me posted. I'm going to probably know way before everybody else because I'm going to creep you and I'm going to let everybody know and promote the heck out of you. I, I hope fans love it. From what I saw, I thought it was great. So, But but I can't be partial. I, I always think everything they do is great. So, I love it. Well, Paul, thank you very, very much. Um, have a wonderful, happy new year. We're halfway through January. I can't believe it. And I look forward to, to all the wonderful things that are to come for you. Thanks, Liz. And you too. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> all right. Take care. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Man, what a great show that was, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. I see so many people in the comments here. I, I could barely keep up, but thank you so much for everything. We can continue the chat afterwards as well. As always, you know, I have to say, making this show is what keeps me going for you guys. And I know around the new year, quite a few people sent me beautiful letters of thank yous and encouragement. And that really, really meant a lot to me. And, you know, I, I'm going to print them out and keep them in a book because really at the end of the day, Planet Wisdom is for you guys. It's about you guys. And I'm really, really glad and grateful that you bring me into your lives every week on your phone, or your TV, that you make time for me. So guys, you know, if there's any, any other guests that you want to see, let me know because this show is for you. In the meantime, uh, just in case you didn't know, we are syndicated on The Carney Show on Twitch on Fridays, now at 8 p.m. Jeff with a G, who's been commenting it tonight, hi Jeff with a G, is making really great content out of New York City. Uh, the Devil's Hour is a fantastic show. I absolutely encourage you to check it out. You can watch Planet Wisdom on his channel now. And if you like what I'm doing, please send me a little love at Patreon and be my patron. I have tiers that start at $5 and go on up. There's lots of benefits. And your support of me helps me create the show for you. You guys are helping me create amazing content. So guys, please definitely always tune in, turn on and take part because we have a lot of guests coming up and you truly never know who's going to land right here on Planet Wisdom. So stay tuned because next week is also a new surprise. Be well, everybody. I'll see you soon.